Before this episode begins, I wanted to say a few words. Insulation is probably the single most controversial topic in the van life community. I wanted to be upfront and say I'm not an expert. I did, however, spend countless hours scouring forums, reading blog posts, and watching YouTube videos to come to my own conclusion. Water vapor, and in turn condensation, is inevitable in a van. We chose an insulation that is known to be a top performer in moisture control. As well, it checked all the boxes that we felt were important to us in our van build. There's no perfect answer to van insulation, but I hope our insight might be able to help you on your journey building a van. As always, reach out in the comments below or find us on Instagram at Trail Vagabonds. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hey guys. We're going to pick up our uh, <laughs> insulation today. It's actually going to be our van's longest trip, and we'll put more miles on today than our van has on it. Check with Havelock Wool to see if there's a distributor located in your neighborhood. We had one 40 minutes down the road, so we didn't have to pay the freight charges to ship three bags of wool across the country. I'll leave the website in the description below. Today we're going to start on insulation. Uh, so we ended up buying Havelock Wool. It is a uh, really good moisture manager. We really like that it's a natural product uh, coming from sheep, of course. And uh, I think for the uh, R value, it is pretty decent. Uh, so they come in two inch bats um, and uh, they are considered R7, which is a pretty decent R value. Today, I think we're gonna start out with just stuffing it into a lot of the um, rails and things that are pretty difficult to get into. We'll just pull off pieces of it, shove it in, and then uh, from there, uh, we'll start working on bats of it. Let's do it. Katie's busy in the van uh, putting in wool insulation. I figured I'd just talk to you about a couple of the uh, benefits of it. We uh, ended up buying three bags for our 159 wheelbase uh, van, uh, which is a suggestion from Havelock Wool. Um, we are just about done with the first bag that Katie's been putting in, so I went and grabbed this one. And uh, I just wanted to talk to you about some of the benefits. So moisture management is big in a van, uh, condensation from breath, from cooking, uh, you know, some people's heat sources, depending. Propane puts a lot of uh, uh, water into the atmosphere, uh, so that's just basically in your van. Um, so moisture management is a big thing. It can pull in moisture uh, when the humidity is high and release it when it's low, uh, so that's one thing that helps. Uh, it doesn't mold and mildew uh, like some other forms of insulation. Some people have put fiberglass in their vans, which uh, usually is not recommended whatsoever. Um, but there's other forms. Denim is a very popular one because it's a recycled product uh, and that can have bad mold mildew issues uh, in the future. Uh, so that's one of the big things. Another thing is sound deadening. Uh, it absorbs sound and so any noise outside of the van, uh, noise inside while you're talking, if you're trying to be in a place that you know you might not want to be known, kind of stealth camping, uh, talking inside your van this will keep the noise uh, heard from outdoors, you know it'll keep that noise down. Um, same with when you're in the van, uh, if you're in a noisy place, say you have a rest stop or a Walmart parking lot, uh, this will absorb the sound outside so you don't hear as much uh, going on outside your vehicle. Uh, so those were two, uh, or a few of the things that we really thought were worthwhile uh, to, to go with Havelock Wool. Uh, and as we go through more, we'll definitely tell you a little bit more uh, about why we chose it. So. To get into these columns in different areas of the van where there's only small holes in certain spots, um, shoving them into the bigger holes and then utilizing a screwdriver, uh, a steel hanger, 
Uh, any, you know, some people use uh, like fishing tape where you wire through the walls. Uh, fishing tape would help a lot for these. Um, I have heard of some people even taking a vacuum cleaner, covering the holes, pulling it there, and then having a piece of paper pull the string down, and then you can just pull the string and that will feed your wool through. Uh, we didn't utilize that. We just took a screwdriver and just where these holes are, just popped them through and filled up this whole crevice. So. Uh, Utilizing whatever you have on hand is, is best. You know, you don't have to go out and buy anything special. Pro tip for while you're insulating the van, use hemp through the eyelets that are in the uh, vehicle uh, to keep the hemp up and in place. Um, it's an all natural way of doing it. Uh, no adhesives needed and uh, Hemp is naturally uh, mildew and mold resistant, so uh, you don't have to worry about uh, breathing in any harsh chemicals off of it, and then as well, uh, no mold or mildew, uh, which is one reason we decided to go with wool in the first place. So I'm insulating this place. Um, and there's lots of little like nooks and crannies to get the wool insulation into. So I'm using whatever tools I have handy and this is just a friggin wire hanger. <laughs> Of the places our framing would allow, we double batted so we have four inches of insulation within the wall. Um, one way of doing that was just folding the bats in half and they were placed and would hold themselves in place. So we have one folded here, one folded here, up here as well. And then uh, where that bump out is, we only have about a one, one and a half inch space in the wall. Uh, so we just pulled some off and stuck in one single layer and that side of the, the uh, um, I guess in that area of the vehicle. And so once we put over that ship lap, it will be holding it in place nice and firm. And uh, you know, we tried to match that inch and a half. So uh, you're still leaving that loft because loft is what um, wool insulation, you know, how it gets its insulating properties. Uh, so keeping it lofted, you know, kind of fluffing it up as we're putting it in, uh, that's a good way of making sure uh, you have that air gap and uh, insulating factor, that R value. Uh, so in places like this, it's R14. Uh, by the bed, you know, it'll be closer to that R7 or lower uh, because we pulled some off. And then for the ceiling, you know, we're hoping to put one bat in, so that'll be R7 as well, and we'll have those ship left going over. But we're waiting on that till we start putting boards across. Uh, and, you know, once those boards are there, it'll be a way to keep it held up. One of the only downfalls I'll say about the wool is all of the dust that comes off of it. That's the only thing I could say. Um, I mean, a vacuum up of this stuff is going to be pretty simple, <laughs> but it is a little bit annoying that it's on everything. So that's going to do it today for insulation. Um, we still have to get the ceiling in and some of the places <laughs> What? You're being very annoying. Both of you. We're gonna start working on the ceiling once we get the uh, shiplap or tongue and groove, depending on which we go, uh, so that that can hold it in place. And then there's a few other places that uh, once we finish with wiring um, and running that down channels, then we can put more insulation in those channels. Uh, but for now, I think we are calling it good for today. Thanks so much for taking along on this episode. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hit that bell to be notified when we post our next van build video. Go ahead and leave us a comment below with what insulation option you plan to use for your van. Or ask a question if you have one. Take care and we'll see you on the next one.